Canon has a reasonably priced camera that can shoot 4K? That doesn't sound right. I mean, I thought they were only gonna put 4K in cameras that cost roughly the same amount as my car. Well, they proved us all wrong. The Canon SX740, it costs about 400 bucks and can record in 4K 30 frames per second. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. I seriously cannot believe this camera exists. Now, I like 4K, and I like Canon, and generally I have to separate those two things because there's generally a cost with wanting both, and mostly I don't feel like paying the cost in either crops, autofocus, or actual money. But here, you get 4K, reasonable price, flip screen, and Canon, like I just keep feeling like it's gonna jump out at me and surprise me that it's like a Sony or something. But before we get too far into the video, however, I would like to thank my friends over at BH Photo for loaning me this SX740. Man, could you make it a more confusing name, Canon? Uh, to make these videos on, if you'd like to get your own unicorn of a Canon camera, there will be links in the description below. Now, let's very quickly cover the main specs in case you've never heard of this camera before, because honestly, I hadn't. I had no idea that something like this existed. The SX740, okay, that's the last time I'm calling it that. From now on, it's called the Zero. This has a one over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor and can record up to 4K 30 frames per second. It comes equipped with Canon's Digic 8 image processor, which for those paying attention is the same processor in the EOS R that's currently recording us. Pretty good. Its built-in lens has an optical 24 to 960, yes, 960 millimeter equivalent zoom. That's 3.3 at the wide end and 6.9 at the zoom. And for autofocus, much like the G7X line of cameras, it has a contrast-based system, which, I mean, that sounds bad, but with as small as the sensor is, with that smaller aperture, the depth of field should be deep enough. Like, it's gonna be a very deep depth of field to not really need to do that much focusing. But who cares about the specs? I mean, we care about how it actually looks. So you know what, let's throw this thing up on the sticks really quickly to be the B cam for the rest of the video. And we're on the zero. Yep, that is a small censored camera, all right? I mean, it's usable at least. I mean, it looks like it's usable from the screen. Okay, time to get to serious business and see how this stacks up against the four most important aspects of a camera for the online content creator. First up, video quality. Like we mentioned, this is a 4K capable camera, but it does have some weirdness to it. So whew, it is a Canon camera. Thank goodness there's there's something, it's not something in disguise. <laughs> That's a bit of a bit of a camera joke there. Now this can only record in 4K 30 frames per second, which is weird because generally Canon only lets you shoot in 4K 24 frames per second. And something cool is there is a 30 minute limit on this, so this can record 4K longer than Sony cameras can. There is a small additional crop when recording in that 4K, but the camera has a wide enough field of view that it's not the worst. I mean, you will see more during the vlogging test here in a moment, but it's wide enough, but I'd probably do the vlogging in 1080p personally. When it comes to the image quality, it's actually pretty good for the price. However, when you really think about it, the main reason you'd end up picking up a camera like this over just using your cell phone is really for two things. And that's the manual controls and the zoom length. Now, zoom length, check, ching It's got that crazy long zoom, just like the Sony HX99, which does add a level of functionality that cell phones currently can't touch. Now, you cannot zoom that far away with a cell phone without doing digital stuff, and digital zooms just look gross. The missing feature, though, and this is a weird one for the cost of this camera, um, there's no manual functionality in video mode at all. Now, we'll talk more about this in ease of use here shortly, but consider that you have no control over what the camera decides to do when you're recording video. Even if, even if you manually set the camera up in manual photo mode, the second you hit record, it defaults back to auto. So like right now, this is in auto mode. I have no control over the ISO, the shutter speed, the aperture, anything. It's just an auto. But despite that, I do think the image looks pretty good, and it does have those pleasing Canon colors, even in 4K, which a lot of its brethren cannot claim. Now, it's, it's not gonna win any awards, and while I can't see the image it's producing indoors right now, I'm, I assume it has more noise than I'd prefer because of that tiny sensor, and it's also has a pretty small aperture, but it's pretty good. Technical image quality is only part of the battle, and while Canon shocked most of us, with their upcoming G7X Mark III, which is a point-and-shoot that does include an audio inject, 
I have no idea where we're gonna put the microphone yet, but it, baby steps, baby steps. Uh, the Zero doesn't have any way to connect a mic, but it does have some microphones on board that are okay. I don't necessarily, none of them are facing forward though. There's one big one on top and it's nothing earth shattering, but it, it gets the job done. And to actually see that in action, let's hop outside real quick for a video slash vlogging test. And welcome to the vlogging test of the Zero or the Canon SX740. That's pretty fancy. But basically this is the, you know, this is all that we have been talking about. Now it is, like we said, there is an additional crop on side of 4K. We are recording in 4K 30 frames per second right now. And as we will mention, it's kind of tight. So it's, it's a little tight, it's a little tighter than I would like from a vlogging camera. But yeah, this is the image quality. This is the audio quality. This is the stabilization because the lens does have stabilization built inside of it. Um, and I'm just kind of hand holding this right now. I normally do these kind of tests with like a tripod of some kind, whether it be a Manfrotto Pixie, maybe a Gorillapod. I haven't used a Gorillapod in a long time. But yeah, this is the image quality that you could expect to get if you wanted to use this for vlogging. Would I use this as a vlogging camera? Probably not. Probably not, but it does have the flip screen. I can see that the flip screen's working. It does look pretty good. You'll Obviously, I can't see what this image quality looks like. You can see what it looks like. And the problem that I'm already seeing right here is none of the microphones the microphone's on top of the camera, it's not in front of the camera, and that can cause some problems when you're getting more of the, like, when you're getting more ambient noise and not necessarily, like, you talking to the camera. But okay, back to the video. <laughs> like I said, the image quality is fine if you're using it in auto mode the whole time, which, I mean, that's all you have, and that is a totally valid way of making video if you don't have the time or the expertise to set everything up manually. And as a personal point here, uh, coming from my own experience. When I started my YouTube channel over two years ago, I did that with a cell phone. And when I did buy my very first quote unquote real camera, it was a Panasonic Lumix G7, which I kept in auto mode for basically a year. And you know what? We ended up doing fine. So auto mode, it's okay. And sorry for that rant, sorry for that rant. I just know there are gonna be experts in the comment section saying how auto doesn't count and it's blah, 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 blah. Auto is fine if you've never used a camera before. And that's a great segue into ease of use, which frankly is way more important to me than overall image quality. And like we previously mentioned and just went on a tirade about, if you're recording in video, there is only auto mode. So pretty darn easy, right? Now I am, as much as auto mode is great if you're gonna use it, if you do want to control the image, I am gonna ding the camera on a few things. And one of that is the no manual mode for video, yes, Manual mode makes it technically harder to use, but it actually makes it easier to get the video quality you want. And the second big thing, which actually surprised me, because Canon is known for this, is there is no touchscreen functionality. Now, off the top of my head, I can't think of another Canon camera that I've used, and I've used a lot of them, that doesn't have a touchscreen. And when your menus are set up in the Canon way, that makes it so much harder to use. Plus, Another big negative for me is the lack of dual pixel autofocus, but I mean, that's not really surprising as even the Canon point and shoot flagship camera, the G7 line, is also lacking that feature. So I, I guess I can't hold that much against you, but dual pixel autofocus is one of the reasons to go Canon. And this exacerbates another ease of use problem with the camera, a lack of real usable physical buttons and dials. Now that's not normally that big of a deal with Canon cameras. I mean, look at the M50. I mean, it doesn't have as many physical buttons as I'd like, but the touchscreen saves it and makes it a crazy easy camera to use. The zero here lacking the touchscreen really compounds the problem because going through the normally easy and intuitive menu system is kind of a big pain here. Like I don't enjoy using this camera as much as I enjoy using the EOS R. Now not much changes after you hit the record and it's lacking one big pillar of the three. Now that's stabilization, autofocus and flip screen. Now some of these are offset because the camera is small, the depth of field should be pretty darn deep and the lens is wide enough and has IS built into it. So hopefully it will correct for the lack of recording ease but it would be just the touchscreen. It would be so much nicer to use this camera if it had a touchscreen. So let's say you are considering the Zero, what does your ecosystem slash upgrade path look like? Well, as a point shoot camera, there aren't very many accessories that you could even buy. By its own nature, it's a self-contained system. You can always buy more batteries, and you should. You should always have plenty of batteries. And maybe someday Small Rig will release a cage for it, much like they did for the Sony RX line. But this is about as small and portable as you're gonna get without needing a bunch of extra crap. Like this right here, 
works perfectly fine. But at the end of the day, so what, right? So should you buy the SX740? I don't think so. Yes, it's a cheaper Canon camera that will give you 4K, but 4K isn't the only thing you need for online video production. The only way I'd really be able to recommend this is much like the Sony HX99, if you want a small pocketable camera with a very long zoom range, then I would recommend the Zero. Like it is actually really good for that. But that's it. Like I wouldn't recommend this for online video production. It's too expensive for what you get when for roughly the same price, you could get the Canon SL2 or save up a little more for the M50. I mean, it's a neat little point and shoot camera and I do hope Canon continues to push tech down to their cheaper bodies, but this one does not get the dad seal of approval if you're making YouTube videos. Thanks for watching.